Hi, this is Ahana. And hi, this is Daniel. And we welcome you to Manifest Your Abundant Business Now. So this is a series we created for entrepreneurs working solo, working from home, service-based entrepreneurs, and online entrepreneurs. Today, we have a very special guest, and he's our mentor who inspired us massively to create our own online business. So I'll let Daniel introduce him to you. Yeah, John has been blogging on the scene for years. Uh, he's shown the power of blogging by taking his blog from zero to 40,000 a month in just two years while working two hours a day, and then has increased it to over $100,000 a month. Uh, his blog is read by over 200,000 active readers and followers. John is living the dot-com lifestyle, traveling to different countries all year round, and in between that, he's living at Orange County in California and going back to mm -hmm. Vancouver last time we checked with him, enjoying the warm weather all year round. So Hannah and I first met John in Singapore in 2015, and really, John was our mentor that inspired us to take action, start a blog, and really just take our online business to the next level. Now, John has also made $3 million from online business, so he's a real true expert at using your blog to create passive income. So, John, welcome to the summit, and we're really excited to talk to you again. Awesome to be here. So, John, what I wanted to start with was actually your story. I, I remember all those years back, I saw a video that you made when you went back to your home country and you know you sh shot it there and it really inspired me when i saw that video i said i'm going to start stop complaining and just start doing what i've been wanting to do all this all this while so as you know when we did you know we did some of your work uh, we took some of your courses and in 30 days we actually created our own blog and we released it and within 15 days we were actually we started making money through it so i just wanted to share that story because i know that a lot of people will be inspired by it so could you could you share that story with us uh so in my house in china okay, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah basically uh that well I, I was born in a small farming village in mainland china uh the house i grew up in had no running water no electricity cooking was done by an open fire and i spent the, the first seven years there and I, I guess anyone, there is a video on my blog that's that where I did a video that house I went back there a few years ago just to take some videos of it and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, got brought home some childhood memories and stuff. And <laughs> so it, it kind of, uh, I, I guess it, it, if you look at it, I guess it is the, 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 uh, the true rags to riches story, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Immigrant uh, lands in a, a foreign country, having, uh, from a communist country, and when, I, when my family immigrated to Vancouver, I was seven years old. Uh, basically, we, we didn't have any money. Uh, we're new immigrants. I was a latchkey kid growing up. I had a little baby brother, baby brother to take care of. Both my parents have to work to make ends meet. Uh, I grew up in the downtown east side of Vancouver, uh, which is, I, I guess, uh, it's um, more the seedier side of Vancouver. To, think of East LA, think of the Bronx. This is probably worse. <laughs> and, but, I, I guess the most people would look at would look at that kind of upbringing and said I, I did that my life probably sucked when I was growing up as a my, as a kid and stuff. But uh, I was always taught to seek out the opportunities. Uh, my dad taught me that, and I, I guess the the reason for that is um, the, that was ingrained in him, and I, he ingrained that in me. And I guess that's why he he worked so hard to, you know, take uh, to bring his family to a new country so I can have better opportunity. Mm. So you know, I didn't see it as uh, living in living in the inner city, mm. uh, but I, I was told, you know, you don't live in the inner city, you live in a house with a toilet that's actually flush. <laughs> and you know, in China we didn't have a, we didn't have a toilet. Yeah. I mean, in our, in, our, in my house back in back in the village, it was an outhouse and basically you did your business and you still scooped it away. And so that, and, but then when I first saw it, I go, they go, oh wow, that, that, I was amazed by that. <laughs> <laughs> right, so basically, uh, I, I guess if I learned anything way back when is that, it's not to, not to look at your situation as a problem, but to look at any situation you have as an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so mo unfortunately, most people see look at the situation and all they see is problems. They see problems, I can't do this, and they'll, they'll come up with an excuse and why they can't do this or they can't do that and whatever excuse they can come up with. But uh, if you see things as an opportunity, it's a problem, the entire world opens up to you. So I was always taught to see things as an opportunity and not a problem. And if I, I guess that's one of the key 
to my success because I try not to see things as a problem. I see I try to look for the opportunity in the problem. So by you know instead of seeing I live in an inner city, I looked at it was it's way more luxurious than where I came from. Mm. So uh, I applied that same philosophy to all my situations. So instead of when I first started online internet marketing, instead of seeing it as all the problems that stood in the way, you know, like uh, I don't know programming. I don't know how to set up a, a MySQL database. Uh, I can't write. English is my second language. My grammar is terrible. Mm-hmm. Instead of, you know, looking at the problems that up to, uh, that's in the way, I look at the opportunities. And so, and that's, that's basically pushed me forward to, you know, to do what it is. And I saw like, I'm going to learn how to do this. And I'm going to learn a new language instead of saying I can't write or I'm going to basically, I'm going to prove my, I'm going to learn how to do proper grammar and speller and spelling and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So as a, uh, basically, um, you know, if I can give a piece of advice to people looking for success, it's basically just to look at things as opportunity because honestly, uh, you don't really have any problems. All you have is opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. So true. Uh, yeah, I, I know that it completely shifted me when I saw that video. And mm-hmm. so, you know, anybody, you know, looking for that video, I think it's it's still there on your website, isn't it? Yeah, if you look yeah. at the house mm-hmm. I grew up in. <laughs> yeah. So everybody wants to start a blog. So first I want to say, is there a right or a wrong way of starting a blog? And um, what are some of the elements that you need to have a powerful blog? So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your blog, how you got started and how you made it yeah. explode in such a quick time? Hmm. Well, uh, I think one of the main reasons the, re- the reason my blog became successful was that you need to put like any any if you look at it from a business standpoint, uh, businesses that put their customers first always does better than business who's just trying to make a quick buck. Yeah. So when I started a blog, I didn't look at so much as it to make money and possibly that you know providing me with a, a life a dot com lifestyle or stuff like that. Uh, the main reason for starting a blog was just to share my experience with the other people, right? So uh, everything, all the blog posts I wrote was basically, I, I asked the question, will my readers enjoy this? Will they get value from it? Instead of saying, how much money will I make from this blog post? Mm-hmm. And so the first eight months of my blog's life, it actually made nothing. It, was, it made no money, like zero, zero income. And, but I step, kept pumping out content daily content, every single day, daily content. For the first five years of the blog's uh, existence, I averaged 2.2 blog posts every single day for five straight years. And even to this day, and 10 plus years later, even to this day, there's never been a single day in the blog's history where there has not been at least one new blog post. So that includes holidays, Christmas, uh, you name it, there's always been at least one post on the blog for someone to read. And I believe it's this uh, level of consistency and putting, asking what your readers want and just basically delivering value to your readers that allows the blogs to success. Because if you're in this just to make a quick buck or just to make uh, money from it, odds are you're not going to last very long because blogging isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. It does take time to build an audience. I said, first eight months, uh, my blog made, made nothing. And got barely a thousand readers a day. Right? But... Uh, it's something you build up over time. And unfortunately, for people looking to make a quick buck or, you know, uh, or get rich quick by doing this, they're going to find that it's going to take much, much longer than they anticipate. Right? So this is a long-term thing, like a real business. The advantage is, as compared to a, a regular business, the startup cost is very, very cheap. Like my blog was started for $10, which is the cost of a domain name. And web hosting, at that back then, web hosting was free. I hosted on GeoCities. Mm. You know what that is. <laughs> so, uh, but so in, ter- in terms of startup costs, it is extremely, extremely inexpensive to start. But that's a double-edged sword. But because, you know, because it's so cheap to start, a lot of people don't take it yeah. easy in, easy out attitude. But you know, they, they see serial like me or they see, they see other bloggers making good money from their blog and they think, I can start a blog and I can make big money. So that's why they start a blog because it's only like 10 bucks for a domain name, a few bucks a month for web hosting. So they started, they start going gung-ho. They, they're writing blog posts. I'm going to become rich doing this. And then they find out the money's not coming in. As a, 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 three months later, it's still making nothing. So then their, their posting frequency starts dropping down. They, they drop down. And instead of one post a day, they're going a post 
a week, then I post every two weeks, and and then they find out, oh, I made a dollar. Then they get excited. They they start up again. So they go on again, off again, on again, off again. And like I said, I think the one of the biggest reason for my blog success is that I was never an on again, off again blogger. I I I I picked a posting frequency. In my case, it was two blog posts a day, and I stuck to it. And I stuck to it for five straight years. Yeah, even when a blog was making nothing, I I stuck to that posting frequency. And it, it paid off. And consistency will pay off for you. If you stick around long enough, Google will find you. Readers will start to appreciate it. They'll subscribe to you. They'll tell their friends. And eventually you'll build an audience. And that audience will stick around. And then you can look at monetizing or making money for that audience down the road. Right? But uh, my first eight months, I had no advertising on the blog. Uh, I just blog posts after blog posts after blog posts. Didn't try to sell anything, didn't try to make any money from it. Just trying to build the audience and deliver value. But uh, once the audience is there, you can monetize it. And if you look at, I guess if you look at Silicon Valley startups or typical business startups, you know that's how they do it. Like look at when Facebook first started. They did not try to make money from it all. They're just trying to build that audience, build that customer base. Because once they get a customer base, then they monetize the customer base. They didn't try to make money from the get-go. Yeah, Google, uh, any Silicon Valley startup always follow that pattern. They try to build the customer base first, then monetize it afterward. So if you want to make money from blogging or any online business, build the customer base first, and then you can monetize it down the road. And, that, and that's what I did. Where people will, will fail is they try to monetize it or make money from it from the get-go. I've seen that all the time. Someone says about blog, I looked at it, and there's like 50 ads on there. <laughs> and, going, and this little content is all surrounded by ads. Because so... If you, if you really look at it, that's like, it's, it's counterintuitive and it actually defeats the purpose because when you're first starting out with a blog, you know, you want people to come and visit you and read your article. But if, you have, if you're running advertising, like a Google ad on your blog, any type of advertising, which is how most bloggers make money, they put advertising on their blog. But you look at what, what is the advertising trying to do? The advertising is trying to get you to click it to leave. To leave your blog. Yeah, so, so you know, you're spending, when you, but when you're first starting out, you want people to come and visit your blog and bookmark your blog, subscribe to your blog, you know, you know, friend you on Facebook and all your social media content. You want them to do stuff, but yet you have this big flashing banner saying, click me, click me, click me, trying to get people to leave. But you're spending all this effort trying to get them to come and you got something else trying to tell them to leave. So it's, so it's, it's counterintuitive. And it, it really defeats a purpose. So I said, first eight months of my lo- first eight months of my blog's life, no advertising. The only thing I was trying to do is once I get on my blog, I say, hey, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Like me, R- click my RSS link, subscribe to my RSS, or ideally download my ebook, you know, enter your email address for updates. Those kinds of things. That's how I'm building the audience. And because after you build the audience, then yeah, you can monetize any way you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we're talking about monetizing, another thing that keeps on coming up uh, for us, for people, you know, who are, who are writing in on how to start a blog, it's, uh, oh, I don't have a product. I don't, I don't know what to sell. I don't know what to talk about. And, and, and the whole idea behind affiliate marketing, they're really scared about. So, you know, what I wanted to, you know, just ask you, because you've really used affiliate marketing to your advantage. So how yeah. do you use it in a big way in your, on your right. blog? And, you know, yeah. so, how do you use affiliate marketing? And maybe just start a little bit about what affiliate marketing is. Okay. For people who are not well, affiliate marketing is just one of the many methods you can use to monetize a blog. Like a typical blog uses advertising, and that's easy to explain. You know, the, the little Google ads you see on a blog. So when someone clicks it, Google makes money. Google shares a part of the money with you. So that's, uh, that's in essence, I'm advertising. The other way, affiliate marketing is where you don't actually, you are, I guess, the middleman for the person. The easy way to explain it is, I guess, is with Amazon. Now, Amazon is the biggest online store on the internet. People buy billions of dollars of stuff from Amazon every single, every single week. But Amazon has an affiliate program where if you refer customers, your readers in this case, you refer your readers to Amazon to, and they buy something. Let's say, let's say, say you read a great book from Amazon and I, I read this book. And I really got value from it. And I want to tell my readers about it. And I say, let's say the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss. So I say, hey, guys, you know, I read, here's my re- book review on the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss. It's a really great book. Uh, I read it. It's got great value from it. And I think it will benefit you as well. And you can, right now, Amazon has it for a 40% discount. Mm-hmm. So I would link it 
to tell them to buy it from Amazon. And Amazon would give me what's called an affiliate link. And it's a link that lets Amazon know that the traffic, the reader came from me. So if the reader clicks that link that I give them to Amazon, they go buy the four hour workweek book. I, Amazon would then give me a commission for selling the book. So that's one way. That's why when some people say, I, I don't have a product and I can't make a product. Well, you don't actually, with affiliate marketing, you don't actually need a product. You're just selling other people's product. In this case, you're selling the millions of products that Amazon has. Yes. And so no matter, what, no matter what niche you're in, Amazon will probably have a product that's in, in your category, like books, uh, actual products. So you can link to them and if they buy it, you get a commission. So that, that in essence is affiliate marketing. So uh, Amazon being the most, but there are hundreds, hundreds of affiliate networks out there. And when you from well, whatever topic your blog is, you can probably find an affiliate product to promote, to make money from it. Right? So that, and that saves you from making your own product. All you gotta do is you don't have to worry about getting, setting up merchant accounts. You don't have to worry about uh, delivery, fulfillment. You don't have to worry about chargeback. Basically, your job is just to send the traffic, which you do with your blog. So using your blog to send the traffic to the affiliate network. And if uh, they buy something, you get a commission. Now, that, that's a typical affiliate marketing program. Uh, it sounds good, but there were a few setbacks or drawbacks with that, with that model. And the, the main problem with the, that type of model is that when you send a reader to say Amazon and they buy something, you'll get the commission for the product you sell. However, Amazon will then get the customer and when Amazon sells them additional product, you don't get any additional money. And so you get money, you get paid for the first initial customer, but you don't get paid when a customer buys again. So when you are looking for affiliate program to promote, uh, I like to look for affiliate program that will try to not only pay you on the first product, but pay you on the residual after, after the sale product. So this way you make money from the customer over and over again. Or I would look for affiliate program that will pay you on a residual monthly basis. And those would be like the, I guess an example would be Aweber. Aweber, uh, they handle my email list software. So when I use Aweber myself, uh, when I refer a customer to Aweber that, and they buy the service, Aweber charges them, on a, it's a monthly service, they pay $19 every month for the service. Uh, I get 30% of their bill. As long as, they maintain, as long as they're a customer, I get 30% of their bill. So the first month, if I were to say refer you to Aweber, because they said that's my email list provider, and if you want to start doing this email marketing, that's what you should use. So you sign up for Aweber. First month, I get zero because the first month is free. It's a trial. But next month, you, you, get, you get a $19 bill, and I get 30%, so I get $5.40. As long as you maintain, be a customer, I will keep getting that 30% every single month. And as your list gets bigger, your bill gets bigger, and my 30% gets bigger. So this is, a, this is a good way to get paid over and over again, but also get paid passively or more residual type income because you're getting paid for something you did a while back. So and over the last 10 years of blogging, I have referred over a thousand customers to Aweber, right? So, and I'm making 30% of these customers every single month. Right? The, uh, like, you know, they're actually like $5.40 doesn't sound like much, but when you multiply by a thousand people, it's, it adds up to a nice chunk of change. Yeah. In fact, the, uh, the biggest account that I refer to Aweber, uh, this customer, his list has hit has 400,000 names. Wow. And, and his monthly bill is $3,500 every single month, and I get 30% of that. Yeah. And to this very day, I don't know who this person is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, this, what this does is this gives me great financial security and stability. Right? Let's say when you, uh, one of the, I guess, reasons a lot of people do not start a business is because of the feast of famine of the typical business. You know, one good month, bad month happens all the time. So a lot of people rather prefer a steady paycheck where they get paid every two weeks versus great month, bad month, where my next paycheck coming from. But by promoting a affiliate program that pays me a residual or percentage of bill every single month, it gives me a stability of kind of like a regular paycheck. So I don't have to worry about my feast or famine type of happiness because I know that I have every month 
you know, it doesn't matter what happened to my blog, you know, these, these customers out there, you know, they, they, they're, I'm getting, I'm making 30% of that bill every single month. So, uh, Aweber is one example. Uh, lead pages is another one. Uh, click funnel, I get 40% of the bill for life. Uh, lead pages, 30% bill for life. Uh, mobile is another one. Uh, that I get five, uh, affiliates I refer to mobile, I get 5% of anything they make. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so basically these monthly residual, adds up to a substantial income that basically that more than allows me to live. So uh, I consider everything else just pretty much additional gravy money on top of that. Right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that, that's what, when I look for affiliate program, I look for things that Indeed. not only pay for the first sale, but pay me for the second, third, pay me the back end sale as well. I also look for a paper program that pays me a residual monthly income yeah. as well. So, because mm-hmm. once you get, once you build up enough of those, it, that right now, because uh, then it wouldn't matter what happened to my blog. If my, if my blog shuts down and I close it, yes, I would lose my advertising income. I would lose the direct promotion that the blog, well, the, money, the direct money the blog would make. But I would still get the Aweber income, the move, the five percent mobile income, all this other income, and it would still be in the five figures every single month. So, uh, and that's the ultimate financial security, and that's what that's what really allows me to live the dot com lifestyle, the time freedom, the money freedom and the location freedom because in order to achieve that because you know let's face it while blogging allows you to do from any other world it still actually requires you to actually i have to get in front of a computer actually type the blog post or actually there is some time commitment involved so the ultimate goal is to have zero time commitment and the only way to achieve zero time commitment is to go is to have create stuff that pays you passively without you doing anything Right. Yeah. So then, and, and there were few, there very few things that actually do, does that. You know, investments and uh, investments and but uh, providing affiliate program where you just send them the customer once and you can pay it over and over again. Yeah. So that's uh, not, and those, those, are my, those are my favorite programs. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. what this morning we got up and we just <clears> opened the computer and it was like somebody <laughs> yeah. somebody else had bought a whole bunch of things. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that, that, passive that's income. The beauty of yeah. passive income. Yeah. No, okay. that's really that's our goal. In the end, that's really that's really our goal. Even, exactly. even if you work at a, even if you're working at a job, you know what is your end goal? I mean, even you, you trade hours for money, your end goal is eventually to retire one day. Yeah. You got, you, you, let's say that even if you don't want to, eventually you're gonna have to retire because you just can't work that long. You're gonna yeah. get old. You're gonna, you're gonna get sick. You get incapacitated in some way, right? So your end, when that kind of situation, you know your situation. Basically, while you're working, you're hopefully you either save up enough money to put into to, so when you do retire, you have a big enough capital base to fund your retirement. Right? Yeah. So when I look at it this way, when I say I look at my passive income stream, that's basically funding the retirement. And I know right now I can actually, if I don't want to, I could just stop blogging, and I'll be able to continue continue living. Right? So, mm-hmm. but, but so the internet just allows you to exhilarate your yeah. I guess your your retirement goals, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so we talked about you know how often you should be writing blogs. You're saying you, for you, you were writing two a day, building it up. Yeah. Um, you know, the content is in the niche that you are, which is internet business, and to help people with that. But um, can you tell people a little bit about the story about how your blog exploded? Because I know you were saying to me that you started putting your blog in other areas, so that really grew up your you know your list, the people that were following you quite fast. Yeah, it's uh, see, creating the content really. Is not enough. Like it's it's, it's kind of like uh, that that baseball movie. It was, if you build it, they will come. Feel it, dream. Feel it, still. Feel it, dream. Feel it, dream. Like <laughs> the, the, the movie saw it. If you build Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. So he he turns his cornfield into a baseball diamond, and all these dead baseball players showed up and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember the movie. Uh, yeah, but you know that that only happens in the movie. So <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of people think if you build a blog, they will come. They figure all they got to do is make my blog. I just gonna build a blog, and then they're gonna get a people will just show up and read it and then does it. But unfortunately, that's, that only happens in a movie. That doesn't happen in real life. If you build it, they're not going to come. You need to market it as well. Uh, so I would say uh, successful blogging, 40% of it is content, mm-hmm. but 60% of it is marketing the content, getting the content exposure so you can bring the people to come and read your content. So. The, 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 good, the good news is that since only 40% of it is content, that means that you don't need to have perfect spelling or perfect grammar. As long as you can get your message across, like the content is good enough, it's good enough. But 
because there are a lot of bloggers, you know, who, write, who do way better blog posts than I do, but they don't get the traffic to the blog posts because all they do is write blog posts. They figure if they write it, if they create it, people will come and read it, but that's not the case. You need to actually promote this stuff. You sure. need to market it, right? So I, 60% of my time is actually spent marketing the content. 40% of the time is actually spent producing the content. So it's together. Unfortunately, most bloggers just spend all the time producing content and no time marketing content. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I first started, how I did, what I did was uh, I created content, not only I think will give reader value, I created content that I think my reader will want to share and share with to their friends. So I guess I get my reader doing marketing. But I also produce content for sites, social media sites that will send me traffic. Mm -hmm. Like an uh, example, I guess back then, one of the very, very big social bookmarking site, this was before Facebook, was Dig. Mm -hmm. Dig and Slash Start. Like, uh, Dig was a social bookmarking site where people submitted stories mm -hmm. and other readers, when they read it, they like it, they dig it up, they don't like it, they dig it down, they dig up, dig down, that's the name Dig. Mm -hmm. So, what I did was, uh, I, uh, Dig was a big site, and if you can, you can anyone can submit a story to Dig. And if enough people dig it up, it goes to the dig fund page. And the dig fund page is viewed by millions of people. So if you can get a store, one of your stories on the dig fund page, you will be sending thousands of people to your site. Thousands of people. Yeah. So what I did was uh, I analyzed the dig reader. And I found out what do dig readers like? What kind of story do they have? What, what is getting hitting the front page? And I started catering my stories to what they like. So I found that they love lists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They love Apple. They hate Microsoft. They love Steve Jobs. They don't like Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. And they have a very, very short attention span. <laughs> and they love the founder of Dig. So a story like uh, Top 10 Reasons Why Kevin Rose Loved His Apple MacBook instantly hit the front page. <laughs> so I, I started writing stories like that, like that kind of stuff. And I got to the front page. Every time I get to the front page, a flood of readers would come. A flood of readers would come. Thousands of people would come to my blog. And they would read the story. I read about it. And then my job is, uh, most of the time what happens after they come, they leave. You know, they come, they make a mess of your house, and, they leave, and then they leave, kind of like a bad house cat. So what I try to do is when they came, I try, to, I try to capture them. I would try to say, hey, subscribe for updates. Uh, like me on social media. Hello. I mean, so I would try to retain some of them. And this is basically how I, how I started building my readership base. I, uh, I, I, basically, I wrote the blog post. I share my blog post out to all these social bookmarking sites, hoping I would hit the front page on some of them. And when they send a flood of traffic, I would try to capture a percentage of the reader that's coming. And eventually that will start started building my customer, my readership base and just started growing and growing. Mm -hmm. And I say, and then, and then it grows to be big enough. It could be become self-sufficient. Yeah. And that's basically what you do. So that's marketing your content. Unfortunately, uh, marketing content, that's where you should spend 60% of your effort. Like, uh, yes, don't just write content. I mean, great to write content, but uh, if you, if, if nobody reads it, then it doesn't know how great the content is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, the three things which are really important, and this is just such an amazing interview, John, because I think, you know, people don't realize these parts. Uh, you know, when you're talking about content, think of the kind of content you want to write, you know, that brings you traffic and do it consistently. And that's how you, you, you grow the blog. I think that's what, what you're saying. And yeah. market it so people can see it. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, right to these days, Whenever I write a new, whenever a new blog post goes on a blog, uh, once it gets published, it gets shared across social media. It goes to my Twitter stream, goes to my Facebook. It gets sent, it gets submitted to social networking site. It gets submitted to Reddit and all and all those other sites. So and instantly they will send me thousands of thousands, instantly thousands of people. And then when they when they come to the blog. I try to engage them and capture them and say, hey, download my ebook. Here's something for you guys you might be interested in. Get into your, enter your email. I'll send it to you. Yeah. And, now, and then after I get the email, then I can use, I can use my autoresponder, my email system to stop, build a relationship with my new reader. Because, you know, they, 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 came from, they came from some kind of link or some kind of social networking site or Facebook or something or a referral. They don't know me yet. So... The worst situation is they come, they read my article, then they leave, and then within 20 seconds, they forget who I am. But if they come, and while they're, while they're there, I try to grab their attention and say, hey, thank you for coming. Here's a, here's a book I've written. I'd like to give you a copy. So give me your email address. I'll send it to you. Mm. If, I, if I can capture the email address, so now I send the book, now I can I have a way to contact them again. Mm. So 
I wait to establish a relationship between the new reader. So that's what I try to do. Once I get an email address, I, I send the book and try to establish a relationship. And the second thing I try to do is I try to establish my brand, establish me as the go-to expert. Like, uh, uh, so I would, share, I would share information about me, where I came from, interviews I've done, uh, uh, media interviews, uh, TV, uh, reality TV shows I've been on, that kind of stuff, to establish me as the expert in that field. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, I would, to make this where the money comes in, and it comes last, and the last thing I do is I would recommend, I recommend solutions to, their, to help solve their problem. In my case, um, majority of people who come to my blog, they want to learn how to make money online. They want to learn how to make money with a blog, or they want to learn how to make money on the internet. So establish a relationship, build my brand, as I'm the guy who, I, I wrote the book on how to make money online, because my book's called Make Money Online. So I, I wrote the book on it, so establish my brand. And then lastly, recommend solution to help them solve their problem. They came to my blog to learn how to make money online, so I would recommend stuff. Well, in order to make money, you will need a email list. If you want to build a customer base, so I use Aweber. You should get it. You, and your first month is free. Go try it out. They try Aweber. They sign up for free. Then the next month, 19 bucks, I make $5.40. So yeah. that's, uh, that's basically how it works. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, now I can see whether you're, you know, you made the list of the top 50 influential bloggers. You're giving people amazing information today. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that people can go and take action and start applying. Uh, so one thing is how can people know more about you? Where can they access more of your work? And um, what free giveaway are you going to lead to the listeners today that are attending the summer? Well, yeah, uh, I actually written several books on this subject. All right, like uh, one book, you can just go to Amazon, search for my name. It's called Blogging Secrets by John Chow. Uh, it's 250 yard pages. Yeah. But yeah, basically, it's uh, my 10 plus years of blogging experience distilled in between 50 pages and uh, it's available and uh, pap- you know, it's just paperback books. So you just order it. I think it's like 10, 12 bucks on Amazon. But I also have an ebook. If you go to my blog, johnchow.com, uh, I have a book that tells you basically explains the business of three. This is more that I use to make money online and live the dot com lifestyle. Fifty two pages of pure content is totally free. Just send to your email. I'll send to your email and you can enjoy the book. It basically explains in more detail, step by step, uh, how I'm doing this, what we're talking about, but just in more detail and uh you I'm pretty sure you get great value from it and uh, it's totally free. Oh, wonderful. I mean, and uh, you know, we only have so much time today in this interview, but before we go, just any advice for people who either just want to start a blog or want to take their blog to the next level, uh, just at this time with what, what's happening, any advice from you? Yeah, my, my biggest advice is a, uh, when it comes to topics, don't pick a topic because it pays the most money. Pick a topic that you actually like to write about. You actually like to blog, you have a passion for, because this is not a get rich quick scheme. You, you know, say, well, that happen overnight. So if you don't like the topic you're writing about, Odds are you are not going to stick around writing about it long enough for you to build enough traction to build a readership base because you just don't like the topic. So pick a topic that you enjoy writing about, that you write about even if you don't get paid. How's that? So that, that, that then you find your topic. Like if my blog tomorrow goes back to making nothing, I will still continue to update it because right? uh, I enjoy writing about this topic. So if you, if, if that, if, if you can say yes to that question, then that's the topic you want to write about. Right? So don't do it just because it's the, it's the highest keyword topic. And the second thing, the second piece of advice is uh, consistency is, and persistency is what's going to pay off for you. Pick a posting frequency, whether it is once a day, once a week, twice a week, or whatever. Pick a posting frequency and stick to it for at least a year. Right? Do not be on again, off again. I see that many, many times. And that's the mojo of people. Some, they get in there, they start going gung home, writing the blog post after blog post, and then they down up again that consistency. Like I said, first five years of my blog's life, 2.2 blog posts every single day. Mm-hmm. And it says, even today's day, never, never wrote one blog post. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. No, I think that's pretty awesome. We've got a lot of good stuff and people better start implementing it. So all I say is thank you, John, for being part of this uh, interview series and sharing your valuable insights. It's been amazing. All right. Great to be here. Now, so everybody that's listening here, check your inbox because the link which contains this video, I'm also going to give them a direct link to that book as well and um, okay. just make it a bit easier. If not, go to johnchow.com, but you can just click on the direct link here and you can download his book. And uh, yeah. yeah, implement what he has to say because, man, this man's definitely leading by example. 
a lot of amazing things he's done. And thank you so much, John, for joining us today. And for all of you all, we'll see you in the we'll next, see you in the next videos. Thank you. All right. Also, my pleasure. All right. See you guys next time. Thank you.